And it's hard, like, so if you're, a, again, using homelessness, but this could apply towards any of these outgroups that we tend to dehumanize. Or people that are, you know, uh, Migrants, if you're white, yeah, right? whatever the group is. Um, you know, so the problem, the first problem with, uh, if you experience any homelessness, and this is, I have not experienced this personally, I've just heard this from friends who have experienced homelessness, yeah. is that the fundamental feeling you have is being unseen and ignored. Yeah. Because uh, we turn away from that. We don't want to see unpleasant things. And uh, we just get used to the feeling of just not looking. Yeah. Um, and so they're not seen. And then, but then, like, you know, the other day we were out and there was a loud man who was ostensibly homeless who was kind of yelling at people, right? right? And we were sitting and it was irritating. Yeah. Uh, so acting out. If a homeless person acts out, then we kind of, that it amplifies our disgust feeling. And so instead of ignoring, then we kind of feel anger. That's the instinctive impulse or dismissal. Right. Yeah. Um, and even if, it, if it's not acting out, if you're walking down the street and you see a very uh, pleasant, clean-cut uh, person walking by, maybe in a suit or maybe they're distressed in like whatever the current fashion is, and they say, hello, loudly. You say, hey, homeless person does that. Oftentimes, there's this confusion. And there's, so there's always these judgments that go on. So we're, it's like all these things are kind of in the way from just being able to look at someone in the eyes and say, hey, are you having a good day? And really meaning it. Yeah, I've definitely dehumanized people before just because they were so rich. Yeah. Yeah. Or, well, and, that, and the, the study says that like that's slightly less than, the, like there's the spectrum, right? So rich yeah. people fall into the, uh, are generally, according to Lasana Harris and Susan Fisk, who researched this, uh, so you have this quadrant of people that are unwarm and un, uh, who lack competence. Sure. That's the homeless and migrants, kind of that sort of thing. Then there's a category of warm but not competent, and that's like where your stereotypical grandma is, and you feel love towards them, but it's kind of a condescending love. Yeah. It's the way a lot of men feel towards their spouses, their right. wives. Uh, but that's still a form of recognizing humanity. It's just not their full humanity. And then you get the people that are high competence, low warmth. And this is where the rich usually fall. And so we have envy towards them. Mm -hmm. And so we, might, we still recognize a part of their humanity um, and we resent them. Yeah. So there's not, and, but those are still, you still recognize their humanity. Your medial prefrontal cortex will still light up if, if you're falling into the, the, the tendencies of this study. But the one, final category of high warmth and high competence, these are the, the friends you really had trust the people you really love, the people you have camaraderie with, those are the people that you fully light up. Um, and to me, the thing is, like, the only reason we don't see everyone that way is because of a deficiency in ourselves. Yeah. And I like to think that God sees us all in that full way. Mm -hmm. But usually the people that fall in that category, like if you show people images of, to some people that are devout, an image of the Pope or others, a progressive, maybe the image of the Dalai Lama or Martin Luther King Jr., or a favorite actor, that does, you are more engaged, you pay attention. And attention, like, and this is, attention is where it's at. And so this is how you get at it, is you can train yourself to start paying attention to people. And then it starts rewiring your brain. So Simone Weil, one of my favorite thinkers of the past, she said that attention is the rarest and purest form of generosity. And then it is. If you can fully give your attention to someone, maybe it's only for a minute, that's a rare thing in our world. And that's not just like doing that thing that I've done a million times where someone's talking and I'm like not really hearing them and I'm being polite. No, it's about like fully giving someone attention. Mm -hmm. And whenever you give attention like that to God, that's what we call prayer and worship. Mm -hmm. Whenever you give that to someone uh, in the real life, that that's kind of like giving them worship. It's like fully giving your full presence to them, and it's a gift. And that's where transformation begins to happen. So in a sense, uh, discovering your prophetic imagination happens by integrating your attention spans inwardly and outwardly in a process of, act of action. Not just meditation, not just reading, not just doing something, mm -hmm. but having your awareness shifts because of your insides and your outsides in the movement that they follow through over the course of your life, not necessarily. Yeah. yeah. So you begin to notice yourself 
you have attentiveness. This is where meditation practice, contemplation have their place, but they're not a silver bullet. Right. Just like a lot of people treat it. And as you start learning to give attention to things, you start noticing things. And then if you start tapping into that generative, kind of that creative place, especially with others, you start realizing like, and this is what activism does. Black Lives Matter is a great example of this, and it's controversial, but I think it's profound, is because, um, and they've got a lot of criticism, but what they've done really well is say, hey, you can't ignore this anymore. We're going to demand attention. Mm -hmm. It's demanding attention, and so people, even if they hate it, this has happened a lot, and the studies show this, people hate the tactic of shutting down an interstate. Mm -hmm. But they didn't think about it before. And I don't care what you say, most people in our society did not know that police brutality against people of color was really a thing. Right. Now everyone does. And now they've decided. You have some people who decided, it's really still not a thing. You black people are complaining. And so they've, dis they've had a choice to change their perspective, but they re-entrenched and became more wooden. And then you have a lot of people who've found ways to stay in the middle and not be committed. But there have been a lot of people who said, I now see this differently, and I'm going to therefore have to act differently. And they've embarked on a journey of transformation. And none of that's clean, but that's, it began with that attention. And it's not awareness. See, the, the, the people mistake awareness and attention all the time. Awareness is just knowing something. Attention is seeing something. Or maybe in a less ableist term, like perceiving something. That's more than just cognitive. It involves your body your experience.